Hello friends, this video on solutions part 28 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's understand a very critical topic called osmosis. Before we understand osmosis, let me tell you, do you know certain things which we see in our life and why it happens? So let's see, do you know certain stuff? For example, you take this water and you take this salt water actually. It's salt water, saline water. You put salt in this water, salty water. So in this salty water, you put this mango for a long time and you'll see that what will happen is this mango will shrivel. You see this mango is shrinking, right? Why it happens? Don't know. You take this uh, flowers and then it's a, it's a wilted flower actually. You see it's a wilted flower. It's not a very fresh flower. You put this in water for some time and you will see that after some time this water, this flowers revive. They become fresh again. This red blood cells, if you put in this salty solution, this collapse. Why? Why it happens? This is all because of osmosis. We'll understand why this is happening. And if you see, observe all these three processes, you'll see there's something which is common in all that is called membrane. They are surrounded by membrane. You see, this mango has a membrane here. There's a membrane here. There's a membrane here. What is the membrane then? There is something called membrane and there is something called osmosis. So we are learning two new terms, one is osmosis and we know that this is linked to membrane. So what is this membrane now? The moment you think of membrane, think of this filter or sheave actually we call it. Think of this kind of filter. So membrane is nothing but it is a thin film like structure that separates two fluids. So if you see these are the membranes, this is the cellophane you see right. So let me write a definition. Membrane is nothing but a thin film that separates two fluids. Big deal if it separates two fluids. But it is something different. It has something extra property that is it is a selective barrier. It is a selective barrier. I'll tell you what does mean. That means it allows some particle to pass. Big particles, if you see, big particles, it will block. Small particles, it will allow. This is what it does. It's similar to filter. In the filter, if you pass the big stones, it won't allow. But if you pass a small one, for example, sand, it will allow to pass, right? The same filters. Same thing is this. It looks like a film, but actually it is a filter. If you see the microscopic level, or you can say it's a macroscopic filter, right? The same, the filter also, if you look at from a very remote, a very distance location, you'll feel it is a film. But since the holes are big, you can see it is a filter. If you see from a close distance, same thing here. The holes are very, very small. So the big particles actually are blocked. These red ones are actually blocked. The one here was already there earlier. These are actually blocked. It will allow blue to pass, but the red, it won't allow, it will block. Because these films has small holes like this. Very, very small, it's macroscopic holes, which you can't see. If you see, a good example is cellophane and also the pig bladder. Like pig bladder is also a good example of uh, membrane. In fact, there are two kinds of membrane. One is synthetic, which you can create on your own, for example, cellophane. The other is natural. For example, pig bladder is a good example of membrane. So these membranes appears to be continuous. If you see this cellophane, it appears to be continuous sheet or film, but they contains network of sub microscopic holes. They have what? Sub microscopic holes. Very, very small holes they have. They appear to be continuous film, but they have very small holes. Small solvent molecules, like water, it will allow to pass through, but the big molecules, 
it will get hindered. And since, and they are called semi permeable membrane, semi permeable membrane. Why? Why semi permeable? Because it permits some, some of the particles it permits, so it's semi permeable, so permeable, semi permeable membrane. Hope you understand what I am trying to say. It's like a filter. It allows small particles to pass through. Big particle it won't allow. So it is semi-permeable membrane. It looks like a continuous sheet, but it has some microscopic holes in it. Think of membrane. Think of filter at a big level. Let's understand the osmosis process. See, if you just ignore this film now, right? Then on the left hand side, we have how many particles? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 5, 10 particles. Here also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 10 particles. They are in equilibrium. But the moment I put the film and this film is a semi permeable membrane. This is a semi permeable membrane. That means it allows only water. Water molecule is the blue one is the water. It allows only water to pass through. Right? So water can pass through. But the red ones are the big solute will not be able to pass through. So now, now if you see since the semi permeable membrane will allow only water to pass through the blue ones not the red ones that is the big solute. And if this is placed between my pure solvent and solution here, so for this semi permeable membrane, the red ones, the solid is totally invisible. Why? Because this is something which it won't even allow to pass, right? Since it won't even allow to pass, so this red one which you can see is totally invisible to this. So we will ignore this. If you ignore this, on right side, we have how many? We have only four molecules. And on the right, left side, we have 10 molecules. So there is a equilibrium difference. We have 10 water molecule here and only four water molecule here, right? Six is my solute, which is totally ignored by this semi permeable membrane. Why? Because the semi permeable membrane will not allow this big red ones to pass through. So what will happen now is since for this, if you look at these from the semi permeable membranes point of view, we have 10 molecules of water here and four molecules of water here. That's the best way to look at this osmosis, right? Just look at from this semi permeable membranes point of view. From our point of view, if there is nothing here, we can see left hand side, right hand side, both are in equilibrium because both has 10, 10. But the moment you look at it from the semi permeable membrane point of view, left hand side has 10 water molecule and right hand side has only four water molecule. This is not there. That means to be in equilibrium, some water molecule has to flow from the left to right and that's what it will happen. So if you see here, this from the semi permeable membrane point of view, this is not there. The red particle was not there at all. So here we have 10 and 4. Now if you see, the water molecules will move from left to right. Correct? And since the water molecule will move, what will happen is the volume will go up. Correct? This was there, but we just removed it from the time being just to understand. Right, these red molecules were there. Now, if you see the water molecule went up, the, the water volume went up in the right hand side, right? In this right hand side, this is left hand side. Correct, what happened? And now, if you see from the semi permeable, uh, permeable membrane point of view, this 10 has become 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This has become 7 here, the new one, and this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This also has become 7. So, they are in equilibrium now from the semi permeable point of membrane point of view but now actually if you see the water level is more here so the water level is more here so the pressure on the right hand side is more the pressure on the left hand side is less correct it is more it is less why because the pressure is all because of the water level right the water level is more the pressure is more but in this case, the equilibrium has been reached because of the semi permeable membrane. From the semi permeable membrane point of view, both sides has 10 water molecules. Sorry, both sides has 7 water molecules and they are in equilibrium. But actually, 
this has more pressure right if you see there will be a pressure difference between the left and right correct so the flow of solvent from left to right across the semi permeable membrane can be stopped actually if we apply the pressure on this side and this pressure which just stops the flow of solvent from left to right is called osmotic pressure please understand if we don't apply any pressure from the semi permeable membrane point of view it was not in equilibrium the water molecule went to the left hand side and the water level increased in the right hand side so there is a pressure difference now what i'm saying if you want to stop the flow of water molecules from left to right you have to apply some pressure on the right side so the exact amount of pressure which we apply on the right hand side that just stops the water molecule from uh, getting flown from left to right is called osmotic pressure of the solution correct so let me uh, redefine the osmotic pressure now so as we just discussed the water molecules went from left to right and the volume of water increased here so here we have more pressure here we have less pressure right here we have more pressure here we have less pressure with the difference in pressure so the flow of solvent from left to right can be stopped actually across the semi permeable membrane can be stopped if we apply extra pressure on this solution side right so this extra pressure that just stops the flow of solvent from left to right is called osmotic pressure and please note flow of solvent from dilute to concentrated across semi permeable membrane is due to osmosis so if you think from here perspective this was a dilute one and this was a concentrated why concentrated because it has solids involved so typically generally if you don't have a semi permeable membrane it is other way around right the flow happens from concentrated to dilute because the red molecules there are only 6 uh, 7 molecules here there is no molecule here if you remove it what will happen is the red molecule will move on the right hand side that is the typical flow without semi permeable membrane but with semi permeable membrane it is other way around scenario right the flow of solvent take place here and that too from dilute to concentrated this is my dilute and this is my concentrated so from dilute to concentrated the flow of solvent take place and this is due to osmosis hey right? because from the semi permeable membrane the world is different because for this membrane it's a different world altogether if you uh, talk about the concentrated the concentrated molecules are generally the one which are bigger in size so if you if you just ignore these if you ignore these then the game changes and that's why the flow of solvent takes place from dilute to concentrated hope you understand i'm trying to say just always think from this semi permeable membrane point of view so whatever it it blocks just ignore that and then think then it's a normal law that is applicable correct please note that the solvent molecules always flow from lower concentration to higher concentration using this through this semi permeable membrane right so the osmotic pressure is depend on uh, that depends on the concentration of solution if you had more concentration osmotic pressure will be more so osmotic pressure depends on concentration of solution and please note again osmotic pressure is also colligative property why because again it depends on the number of solute particles it doesn't care about the chemical property of solid particles the number again actually so it is also colligative property so it's a good time to quantify the osmotic pressure now because we told osmotic pressure is uh, osmotic pressure is directly uh, proportional to concentration right or yeah concentration of solution at a given temperature so they let's quantify it right so for a dilute solution it is found experimentally for a dilute solution it is found experimentally that osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is directly proportional to molarity 
of solution. Please note, till now we have been using delta Tf, delta Tb that was depending on the molality of solution. Now it is molarity of solution. Please note it is not molality, it is molarity of solution, right? And the formula given was this pi, let's suppose osmotic pressure is nothing but pi or this both symbols are used is CRT. C is nothing but molarity of solution. C is molarity. Molarity is what? Number of moles per unit volume of solution. This is my formula. Pi is nothing but CRT or number of moles by volume into RT. That is the formula used to find the osmotic pressure. Correct. And so big deal, osmotic pressure we have, you know osmotic pressure. What is the use of osmotic pressure? First thing is it is used to determine the molar mass. This is a very good method to determine molar mass, right? Especially for proteins, polymers, right? And other macromolecules. These are generally used for biomolecules. Why? I'll tell you why. Because these bi bi biomolecules are not stable at high temperature or very low temperature also. Till now the uh, formula which we have used is delta Tb is nothing but Kb into M, right? So in that case, you have to boil the actual uh, compound to find a molar mass. Correct, this is molality, but molality is nothing but uh, mass by molar mass by kg of solvent. So actually you can find it. But some of the biomolecules are not stable at high temperature. So in that case, boiling won't help. So this method has an advantage because here you, you, you need not boil, right? So there's an advantage of using osmotic pressure to determine molar mass. One thing, the biggest advantage is the whole experiment happens at room temperature. Right. Second thing is you use molarity or solution instead of molarity is used instead of molality. Molarity is not used. Correct. And third is it, its magnitude is large even in dilute solution. Even in dilute solution, the magnitude of osmotic pressure is large enough to measure. Large enough. But if you see delta Tb and we have seen in dilute, dilute solution, the change in temperature, the change in the boiling point is very, very small and we need high, high, uh, high quality devices to measure that change, right? Because the, this change is very small. But in this case, even for dilute solution, the osmotic pressure is large enough. It's easy to measure. So these are some of the advantage of using osmotic pressure as a way to determine molar mass. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.